Don't mind the owl. That's not mine. Hey, it's that home detective guy that turned into a building inspector. I have a really cool idea for a video for you uh, to help you framers out there better understand uh, a roof construction. I know most of you framers know what you're doing, but there's some out there that still need a little bit of help, and so this is to help you. Okay, here we go. We've got a roof, typical nominal lumber roof frame. This is called a rafter tie. This is called a collar tie. Not a collar tie, not a rafter tie. You need them both in a typical roof construction like this. All right, the whole purpose of a collar tie is to simply hold pressure to that ridge beam, or sorry, ridge board. It is not to hold anything else other than these two rafter ends to the ridge board. That's the only reason we have collar ties there. This is the rafter tie, also known as a ceiling joystick that's holding up the ceiling. But it's a rafter tie, and this is required by building code because it completes the triangle of the roof frame, which, as we all know, is a powerful shape. All right, for this part, I removed both the collar tie and the rafter tie, as you can see, um, to just show, which I'm sure most of you understand how this works. If you don't have that triangle finished with those rafter ties in your roof frame, and you get a whole bunch of snow or load on top of the roof, you can see what happens. These outer walls, the exterior walls, start to bow out. And I know you've seen that on many old houses. Uh, so these rafter ties and collar ties keep all of that roof structure in place, long and healthy life, so that we don't have to worry about it. It's all about safety. I'm going to do another video next time that's going to talk about Raised wall lines and sheer strength so that your house doesn't do this, especially when it comes to garage doors and portal framing and alternate bracing methods, which always get screwed up. <laughs>